Hi, uh, you're watching GearWire.com. I'm Owen O'Malley, and we are at the 127th AES conference in New York. I am here with Chris Muth of Dangerous Music. As your background, primarily as a recording engineer or as an electronics engineer? My background is as a maintenance technician. I'm the schmuck who comes into the studio before the band gets in there and aligns the machines and uh, checks out, all, you know, fixes all the equipment. That my, I was the uh, my first job was at the Institute of Audio Research. I went to school there, and a couple months into it, all the shit was broken. Everything was, all the oscillators didn't work, and the console was busted, and the tape machine had six tracks out on it. And we, I went over to Al Grundy, who ran the school, owned the school. And it's like, Al, Jesus Christ, we can't, you know, our fucking shit's broken. And he hired me. It's like, you want to fix it? Great. And he gave me a soldering gun and showed me how to, I had, I already had been building my own stuff in high school. and, and uh, I grew up in Alaska, and then up there, at the, in the 70s, he, he didn't go to Sam Ash and buy a tape recorder. He, he went to Salvation Army and he bought three broken tape recorders and basically fixed them. Um, and that, so that's how I learned how to do this stuff, is having to sit and build, being poor, you know, like, having to build my own equipment. And uh, so when I, went, when I moved to New York, it was the same thing. I was like, oh, everything's broken. And I was like, everything's always broken. So I helped him fix some stuff and I got a job at the Hit Factory right after that. And um, after a year and a half of that, I became a chief engineer. So that's my background, is being the chief of maintenance at major recording facilities. And, and uh, in 1990, I got tired of recording and went into mastering and started working at Sterling Sound and uh, became a chief technician there in a year or so. And I've been there for 18 years and building their, uh, designing all their mastering gear. They're customizing. When you buy equipment for mastering, nothing works. And so you have to, you buy things and you go, oh, this sounds great, it'll only, it, had a faster release time, and fully the EQ had half dB steps, and so that's basically the, the high-end mastering places have somebody like me who sits down and makes the gear, customizes the gear to make it what they want, and uh, they also set up with a, my mastering consoles and things, so that's my background, is building high-end gear for rock stars. And so uh, you said that you became the chief engineer? Uh, Ted Jensen is the chief engineer at Sterling. I was the chief of maintenance. The, the, the cheap, the, the guy who designed the shit and fixed it. So, do you do any like track, like recording engineering, any tracking like that? Um, I do. I, I don't do as much as I used to. Um, I used to do a lot at the Hit Factory, um, and less and less as the years go on. Um, not because I just think music sucks today, but uh, no, I'm, bu I'm busy designing equipment mostly. So, I I did just go out and record a. Um, string quartet with original 14th century instruments in it. And uh, that was really fun. I, I used a, a Neumann SM2 tube microphone, and I was going to bring a Nagra, but I wound up uh, recording it on my, I have an EMU card for my piece, for my laptop. And that worked, it was great. We recorded at 96K and it sounded fine. And uh, you can hear the airplanes flying over and we missed a lot of takes or buses. And, but I, I, do, I do record a little bit. I master a lot at home. I have a mastering studio at home uh, to run a test of the equipment. And um, my wife is a mastering engineer. She worked for Bob Ludwig for years. She used to work at Sony Classical, and then she worked for Bob Ludwig for many years. And um, she moved back down, and she had a, She woke up in the middle of the night a few years ago, and like, oh, Jesus. It's like, Jen, everything's fine. Everything's okay. So I, I dreamed I, I dreamed I asked you to build it. I dreamed you built a recording studio in the house, and I was okay with it. It's like, no, honey, I'd never do that to you. And um, so now you go into our house, and the first thing you see is a big mastering studio. But she she does four or five records a month, so the next year, you know, six or eight thousand bucks a month is, is good. So uh, she doesn't uh, she doesn't wake up in a cold sweat anymore. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, so the the fourteenth century instrument uh, chamber is it? Can we listen to that? Where could we listen I, to that? It's not out yet. And uh, uh, Pablo Mojave is the cellist. He is a teacher in um, Minnesota, and I. I'll have to post it, but it isn't done. It's Jen is editing 500 takes of everything together. It's awful. One note here, and oh, this note's great from this. Oh, Jesus Christ! And that's what she does. All she works at NPR, um, the radio station, so she makes 1,500 edits for an hour worth of on the media every week. So, when lots of editing comes up, I always say, hey, Jen, yeah, can you show me how to use the editor? And she looks at me like I'm full of shit. It's like, yeah, yeah, you want me to edit this? Yeah, well, it's just the, uh, you know, 1,400 edits that you have to make on this thing to put this Bach piece together. 
So she hates me. Oh, that's <laughs> sounds like a healthy relationship. It is. It's a healthy relationship. <laughs> Yeah, she's fantastic. She's an engineer, so she's really gross and disgusting like all the rest of us engineers. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs>